Hello. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back to day three of Sarah Jung. Hello. Who's been here with us doing a lot of cool illustration stuff on this one piece that some people have already won. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> San Francisco, sort of like a vacation theme with a lot of like just people walking around. Yeah. Awesome. And hello to everyone out there. Thanks for tuning in. Mm -hmm. We're happy to have you back. Where's everyone coming from? We're excited to see where in the world people are tuning in. Germany, India. Wow. Awesome. Awesome. Hello. <laughs> All right. So okay. So if I could continue with <laughs> this. <laughs> there is a little bit of a pen charge situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So today, instead of doing a art piece for the duration of the show and drawing alongside Sarah, which you can obviously do anyway because drawing is fun and it's a great way to start your day, we're doing portfolio reviews towards the end of the day mm -hmm. around 10.30. So if you would like to submit your portfolio and have both of us look at it and kind of give feedback and talk about it for a good chunk of time, mm -hmm. we'd absolutely love to have you submit where if you go into the Behance uh, video and go over to the portfolio review section on the far right, there's a link down at the bottom that you can go to and submit whichever portfolio you want to have us look at. Yeah, and we'll like give you feedback, you know, pointers and stuff like that. So it'll be a good chance for us to actually really interact with you all. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Aside from just being able to kind of go through a teaching right, right, yeah. process. So. But, and it's always a good thing to hear feedback and mm -hmm. kind of be able to take it in and move forward with it. Right. Which I even still continue to. Yeah. Learn. Yeah. So participate. I want to look yeah. at everyone's stuff. So the benefit of getting feedback already a huge reason to do it. Mm -hmm. However, there's also the opportunity to, to get these halfway through today at 930 in which the giveaway is going to be this pin of the Illustrator logo, the sticker, and one of each of these prints. So not just one print, but as long <laughs> as... <laughs> They're really pretty, yeah. And yeah, they and they were all created on Adobe Live mm -hmm. during these streams. And this one is Jing Wei, who apparently created this while doing the entire piece with the chat kind of contributing ideas towards this pool party. Mm -hmm. So thus we have this crazy kind of there's a dog and an octopus, I think, in there. Really? Yeah. Oh, cute. Yeah. This has least glare. Mm -hmm. This one as well mm -hmm. by Christine. Christine Heron. And? And this Mr. T with a rose <laughs> <laughs> by Rob Zilla, who I know has been very active in the chats and has been a huge friend of Adobe's mm -hmm. for a long time. But yeah, the uh, as long as you're just active in the Behance channel and bringing in comments and interacting, you'll be up for a chance to win all those good things. Yes, grand prize for today for participating. And sorry, the uh, the one for the portfolio review would be getting art pieces. Right, yes. My, from Sarah right, for the, the final piece. Mm -hmm. So speaking of the final piece, if I can just get into oh, here. Yeah. And yes. so previously on the last two days was sort of day one was doing line work. Mm -hmm. Day two was doing a lot of under gradient values, mm -hmm. still it, using the pencil and getting textures. Yeah, so today we're going to be starting on color. Um, as you can see that I've always, uh, I mean, I've already sort of like put in like the main sort of color palette into the piece. And um, I always do this before, so kind of like how I start my um, illustrations, like I lay everything down first, like the main color, like the main shapes and stuff like that. Um, so this isn't actually what it's going to look like. I clean this up afterwards, so, but you can say that this is the general idea of like what it will look like in the end. I mean, so. the textures are really shining. Yeah, mm-hmm, um, but me. And all those layers again. Yes, I make um, uh, <laughs> all the layers, yeah. But like um, we were mentioning yesterday, it's kind of like, a, you know, a coloring book. But um, yeah, so to begin, so I already went ahead and like cleaned up like the skin tones and stuff like that already in the piece. So I'm just gonna move on to the- Cause second. yesterday it looked like, what exactly by the end? 
Um, it looked like like nothing. Like it was just this. This is nothing. Yeah. This is, <laughs> this is garbage. No. <laughs> uh, but this was like um, what I left off with, and um, I just um, started adding on top of that like color swatches that I wanted to use. Mm -hmm. The inside part of the New Yorker. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then now it's becoming the cover you know, uh -huh, or whatever. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> but um, now I'm gonna just add in the actual colors I want to use. Um, It'd be pretty I was also interesting to here. add the New Yorker text at the top and just kind of like tweeted at them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> yeah, but um, so if I can just start with this. Also, I lied yesterday or for the past two days. I said About that. Everything. <laughs> um, so I said I used just the pencil tool for Adobe, but or for Adobe Sketch, but I actually use um, this tool, this brush as well, and that's the. I believe the water. Are those all the same? Yeah, they're all the same okay. brushes, like these four. I just use it as like a like different color, so I don't okay. have to like pick it out every time. But it's the marker brush, and um, it, the default setting is that it's like set at a like low flow, so it's like kind of like transparent, and you have to go over and over again. So it's kind of like a like a marker mm -hmm. or a highlighter or something. But um, yeah, I set that up to like the highest, and I pick the color that I want to use. And start with this one, and then I. Have and is that a here. default brush? Um, yeah, it's a you... default okay. brush. It's the ones that are already in the um, the Adobe. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. So both these tools that are being used mm -hmm. are available just by default. Right. Yeah. And again, everyone can download the uh, Kyle Webster brushes, put them in their CC files, mm -hmm. and get access to a whole plethora of brushes. Right. Yeah. But. The brushes that already exist are already awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they work like just they, they they're very suited for how I work. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. always found they're very helpful. But, um, but yeah, it's now it's just like coloring and nothing too crazy beyond that. But Simon's asking, can we get a video replay of the sketch from start to present within Sketch? Yes. So there's a uh, option called time lapse on Photoshop Sketch, which is new-ish, but yeah. it just automatically collects all of. Yeah. So if I um, finish this and come up here um, on my settings, I don't know, right? Yeah, the upload button. There's a button called time lapse. And it basically generates a video from like start to finish of what I did the whole time. So I'm actually going to be probably uploading that onto my um, social media handles after this. So if you guys go follow me, you'll be able to see from start to finish. So, mm -hmm. ah, exciting. Awesome. <laughs> we can see what you did when not working here. Yeah, basically. Oh, yeah. And um, yes, secretive. <laughs> <laughs> exclusive stuff. But um, you'll also see like, uh, but it will be like a, a fast generated time lapse, mm -hmm. so it'll it'll be like probably four minutes or something like that at the most. But Which is exactly how fast it took to make. <laughs> yeah, I just did this all yep. in four minutes. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> so welcome again to everyone who has joined us today. Mm -hmm. We're here starting the colors finally after a lot of questions around if it's going to be even in color. Yeah. If you're going to get to color. So we're finally getting to color mm -hmm. and see this giant super colorful, probably very bright colors from what I see so far. Yeah, I mean, I, I tend to work with more bright colors, so yes, it'll be bright. As opposed <laughs> to all the horror movies that you love. That yeah. Bright colors. <laughs> a bit of a juxtaposition there, but you know. <laughs> yeah, so today seems like a great opportunity for, I mean, obviously questions to do with the artwork itself, but mm -hmm. there are also questions for Sarah about anything. Yes. About life, about preferences on how am I doing? How she's doing. <laughs> yeah. How's your mental health? <laughs> yeah. Which all comes back to a creative process anyway. Yes. Yeah, so exactly. it all does make sense. Mm -hmm. So feel free to ask any sort of questions. It'll just be chill, like the um, near the end of yesterday, where I was just coloring and you guys ignoring came. us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everyone seems very much into the print and excited, so. Yeah, I'm glad. You know, I was like a little nervous, like, I don't know where this is going. We're but here to support. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's been very helpful, so. Illustration's awesome. Okay, so first, mm -hmm. Jessica asks, how are you doing? How am I doing? <laughs> I'm doing well. I really like it here in San Francisco, and it's just been like nice, um, 
and um, meeting my friends yesterday as well, um, friends I went to school with, um, and excited to be finally finishing this illustration and like seeing how the turnout will be. So I'm doing well. The most gratifying feeling. Yes. <laughs> it's like, finally it's done and in my hands. Yeah, how is the, you said your work typically, once you've exceeded three days, you tend to feel like it's not gonna work out. Yeah, or it, it, that's kind of like my um, deadline for myself, kind mm -hmm. of. It's like, okay, this is taking too long. And usually by that time is when I figure it out. So yeah. it's like, all right, you know. But if it takes longer than that, I just become like my emotional investment just starts to deteriorate, mm -hmm. and like I don't see I, I stop seeing a point to like well why, and <laughs> which makes a hard point for <laughs> when pursuing the children's books and comics. Exactly, you sort of have to like set up regiments for that. Yeah, and um, so so like when I stop working on a project, it's not completely scrapped. I um, you know keep it away because sometimes you just need fresh eyes on it mm -hmm. to like be re inspired. So. If I don't like something, um, I'll just like put it away, and then I'll come back <laughs> 84 <laughs> years later. <laughs> this was a book once. Yeah, <laughs> I'll be like that rose. Like it's been 84 years. <laughs> yeah, that's. Yeah. I mean, there's like when going through old files yeah. in like a drive somewhere, and you're like, oh yeah, yeah, this I like exists. halfway finished this thing. Yeah, and by that time, if my style is like pretty like consistent with it, if I still see that like there's potential there, I'll definitely pick it up again and mm -hmm. try to re rework it so that it it's, it works for me. Emma's asking, what is your go-to shampoo? My go-to shampoo, it's actually this uh, Korean. Um, uh, shampoo actually, and you can get it from H Mart. Um, I don't know what it's actually called. I just know that like it's called like it gives you like tengi mori, which is basically like like really straight, sleek, strong, long mm -hmm. hair, and <laughs> and clearly it's worked out. Yes, they're not lying. <laughs> yeah, so I, I use that, and I just really like the smell of it of the shampoo. It's like very nostalgic to me. But um, my sister hates it, and every time she comes to visit, she's like, "I'm gonna get another shampoo." Does she hate aid. nostalgia? <laughs> I don't. I think it's like different, uh, you know, connections towards mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. Like to her, like it, I guess it reminds her of bad times. But for uh, me, it's like, oh, this is nice. Because there's that a uh, really like tarish kind of shampoo that I'm a big fan of. That's uh -huh. like really good for helping with dry scalp, but it has this kind of like, I don't know, garage like uh -huh. smell to it, and I oh. like it. But yeah. Okay, I yeah. Doubt other, it's like as if they melted tires down to like a liquid and then right. you're putting that in your hair. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds um, metal. <laughs> I mean, it works really well. Uh -huh. But yeah, that scent, very, very particular. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Martin asks, how are you people? So we follow are, up on that. How, well, how are you? How are Good. things? Good. Yes. It's uh, <laughs> first time hosting. Uh -huh. So having super fun, being uh -huh. able to meet new artists right. and be involved with the community as much as I can be mm -hmm. because I love giving back to the art community. So That's being able important. to relay mm -hmm. questions. And yes. You've been doing really well, by the way. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> so. Help people learn more because mm -hmm. we all started there. Right. So. We were all in the same little footsteps. Martin before. also asks, how can I get my work seen? How can you get your work seen? Um, put it in platforms where people can see them. There's yeah. a lot of them. Yeah, there's, um, like, if you really look, like, I know Dribbble is one of the uh, main sources for people to look at stuff. Mm -hmm. um, Behance, uh, Instagram, like, if you're looking for something more, like, Tumblr, Pinterest, mm -hmm. just put it, like, like you know, we're living in, like, this age of where we can upload pretty much anything. Um, you can create a Facebook page for yourself, even, for your art. Um, and, yeah, it's really easy. Yeah, you know? it's, like, I'd say it's easier now than it's ever been because you used to have to make postcards or yeah, for pamphlets sure. that you send to mm -hmm. printers or whatever and then right. hope that they even get them. Yeah. Sometimes you get a exactly. return that's like damaged <laughs> and clearly they didn't get it. Other yeah. times you never hear anything and assume they got it and threw it away. Right, right. Um, but now you can just be like, at this person, check it out. And yeah. most likely you're not going to get a response, but there's always the off <laughs> chance that they're like, cool, we're mm -hmm. glad you like gummy fruits. <laughs> We'd love to work with you or something. Yeah, so it's easy to get your work seen now for sure, and um, it doesn't have to be anything too fancy, you know, like printing out postcards and stuff. Oops. There's one other question I saw in here that was good. Amongst all these 
hair conversations now. <laughs> What kind of a uh, what kind of this hair would Robzilla have if Robzilla was dreaming of hair? I just Rob saw. Zilla? I wish I had it. <laughs> what would be your dream hair? My I mean, that question kind of goes out for everyone. What's your What's the dream hair that maybe you don't have that you wish you could pull off? What's yours? Mine, I actually kind of want a um, what's it called a mullet. A mullet? <laughs> yeah. So my my friend I'm visiting in uh -huh. LA in like a month uh -huh. that I'll be working on a project with uh -huh. used to totally rock a mullet. They're cool. Yeah. I feel like every cool per like <laughs> you can't meet someone that has a mullet and they're like not cool because they're so confident about themselves. Exactly. It doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. And like I I mean I people say that they're ugly, but I think that they're actually really like pretty high fashion. <laughs> <laughs> and some people that pull it off, it just looks really great. I don't know if, I don't think I would just because I have like a very like pumpkin shaped face. <laughs> Maybe the mullet just like <laughs> just has to be wider in the back yeah. or something. <laughs> It'll be weird. But Mohawk. Good choice. Mohawks are cool too. There was As opposed to Liberty Spikes. Um, What's the difference? When you have the... Oh, okay. Yeah, and a mohawk is like just... This is the full on. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then okay. mo like mohawks, you can have like short, tall. Okay, tons okay. Of different. Oh. You get the trifecta. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Do you have a... Do you like drawing hair? Or is that a necessary evil? Um, I used to hate it. Like, I don't... I think this would be like common ground for people, for some of you. Like, you start... When you start, like, illustrating, you, get, you start to have fun with the eyes first. And then like the face, and then you always save the hair for the last part, and you're just like, oh, why? Like this takes so long. I have to That's draw where the every strand. Comes in. Yeah, exactly. So for me, what was like my saving grace was um, discovering that I could use textures. Like for this um, Photoshop sketch, like I could just like lay my pencil flat on the ground, so I can really just focus focus on like the main shape that I would want for the hair, and then um, I wouldn't have to like go in to like put in every strand unless I wanted to, which is it's nice to have options. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's a necessary evil sometimes, but not all the time. Yeah, just draw everyone bald. Yeah, <laughs> you totally could. You know why not? You know when in Rome. <laughs> Wayne Smith asks, mm -hmm. what did you enjoy drawing most in high school? Uh, let me think. I don't know. I did a lot of like different things. I So I actually didn't really um, like get passionate about what I drew until I went to college. Because like in high school, it was just something like I would just draw random things. Mm -hmm. And in a sense, that's sort of like illustrative in a sense that like, like, I would get be given an assignment and like draw what they like the professors would tell me to draw, and so I did that, and then um, and then I'd get a good grade because I did exactly what they told me to do. Totally. Yeah. So. Lots not, of uh, drawing on trapper keepers and like yeah. inside books and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I doodled a lot yeah. as um, yeah. I doodled a lot of my sketchbook. I actually drew a lot of anime. Yeah. I did as well. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of uh, Goku yeah. and stuff doing like. Scream pose. Yeah, and I used to like um, write my own stories and stuff too that were like sort of anime-ish. Mm -hmm. And so like I would draw the characters for my story. Um, did that. They're piled away somewhere now, never to be seen again. They will never see the light of day. <laughs> are they safe? Um, I literally actually have no idea okay. where they are. But um, I, I remember exactly what they look like and their, their story and they're in my head. So you could yeah. recreate these. I could. Once you get a publishing deal, just make like <laughs> just fourteen year old you story. Yeah. Oh, that'd be <laughs> weird. Yeah, but um, yeah, like I used to do a lot of those when I was in school. Awesome. In high school, yeah. And as a reminder, everyone, if you are in the Behance chat, there is a portfolio review mm -hmm. happening today, and over on the right hand side, there's a little tab for it, and the link that's there, you can then just go submit whatever work you want us to review, and the winner of that is going to get, or not winner, the two who are uh -huh. kind of chosen that we're gonna speak about are mm -hmm. gonna get prints of yours. Right, yeah. Signed with love. Yes, <laughs> uh, it'll say XOXO Sarah Junk. <laughs> yep. <laughs> exactly. There was a question about this being New York City. No. No, this is San Francisco. Although New York, New York City has a lot of like interesting people for yeah. sure. Yeah. Both City is very good about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like with uh, San Francisco, or I guess with both, like 
it's not always like interesting people. Like some like there tends to be like a crowd of people and they're like wearing the same things. And every once in a while you see someone that stands out and they're like iconic. And that's like those are the people that I'm like, okay, you know. It's like a snapshot to use yeah, for later. Exactly. Yeah. And I noticed that a lot while I was here in San Francisco too. So that's been that's been nice. Carolina or Carolina mm-hmm. asks about your perspective and depth. Like what what you've done in the past to kind of know how to do perspective in depth. Oh, okay. I was just like in your illustration. Yeah, I was like not your perspective what? on the world. That comes yeah. naturally. <laughs> I was like, you don't want to know. <laughs> but <laughs> hard um, hard life. Yes. Um. I actually. Good question. So in um, in college, like first year of college, I uh, did you know stuff that the pe- like, professors told me to do, and then I noticed that like perspective was something I had a lot of fun with like and that was always like my strong point um, and, um, and there was this one piece that I did it was like a six foot drawing and it was like this girl it was actually really morbid but it was like this um, like a failed suicide attempt illustration mm. or drawing. so ultimately the light at the end of the tunnel yeah because they failed yeah <laughs> yeah and it's like it was really crazy it was like this building and like this rope like that's like actually really close to you and like you can see like the beads and stuff and like um, shoes in there, and mm-hmm. then a cloud like way beyond. And it was like this really crazy perspective. I think you could see that actually on my Behance page. Oh, I don't like think deep, I ever- deep back in the past? Yeah, yeah, I don't I don't think I ever took it down, but um, it was for my competitive scholarship awesome. portfolio. Yeah, and so working with perspective has always been like something that I, I knew I always had fun with. Mm-hmm. And um, of course it came with practice, but um, yeah, I, I just decided to further indulge and like see where that could take me mm-hmm. if I, practiced it more. And then once um, I kind of got a f- good understanding of it, lighting became, you know, second nature. It was like well associated with it. So it was like, okay, well, I know where everything is. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And I saw some questions about the giveaway. Uh, mm-hmm. As long as you're in the Behance channel, leaving comments and being involved. Yes. In about eight minutes, we're going to have a hype session for Mm -hmm. what you could win, which is this Illustrator pen, this Illustrator sticker, and all three of these prints. They're so beautiful. As long as you frame them, because if you don't, you don't really deserve to. Yeah, (laughs) you don't deserve it if you're not gonna They need love. Yes. (laughs) They're beautiful. They need a a new home, a nice home. I mean, that's the sad thing with like all the prints I have. Oh. I have tubes and tubes of prints and no walls. Oh no. So they just sit in darkness. <laughs> Me? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Any more questions from you guys? You mentioned yesterday about some new Adobe apps will come for Surface Pro. Can you say more about it, please? Surface. I don't specifically know. I just. New mm. Adobe apps? I don't know if yeah, because the Surface is like kind of behind the iPad, I think. Uh huh. Oh. I know. I know they're working on it. detail wise. I'm not. I don't have the. Ends. Yeah, I don't really know. I just heard that they're making. Like I, I think we. It was. I think they're talking about the like the 18 by 24 with like 300 DPI. Yeah. Yeah, but that's literally all we know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we're on the same boat with you. Like we don't really. We're just crossing our fingers and waiting. It's like opening up a sweet new future present. Exactly. Eventually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I'm sure it'll get there soon. So let's just remain patient and it'll be worth it in the end. I'm sure they're preparing something that we can't even conceive. I know, yeah. It'll be released and we'll be like, oh, I had no away. idea. Yeah. <laughs> Laura Gonsalves mm-hmm. asks, is there a way to recolor layers in Sketch? Recolor layers. Um, so if they're asking about like something that's already colored and you want to use a different color, um, I mentioned it yesterday where you can like paint inside. So there's like an option where you can press your layer and then the pre- uh, turn on paint inside, and that basically, um, and if you draw on top of that, it will only go. The brush will only go to where the colors have already been put down. So mm-hmm. if I ever want to like change the color that I already have down there, then I could just do that. Yep. Mm. And if you're familiar with a. Uh quick masking in Photoshop. It's mm-hmm. basically the replace yeah. mint for the mobile right. experience. It's like their response to it. Yeah. yeah. Andre asks, are you using the iPad Pro as your main machine for work? Um, right now, yes. Yeah. Um, I 
I, I never really found a reason to like work with anything else. Um, but sometimes when I'm practicing art, I'll use a different uh, tool. But right now, yes, it's my main method of working. We have a uh, Pegan Regini mm -hmm. saying about after the talk of the matte screen, he ordered one. Okay. So we'll see how yeah. it goes. Yeah, good luck. But it luck. says it's tough to install, or that tough it to. might be tough to install. I've definitely read a lot of things of like people having issues applying the matte screen. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I also don't know if it's much like any sort of bad review on Amazon where someone had like a bad experience and they just like take to the okay mountains yeah. and start screaming about it. When <laughs> if you got like a good experience, then like you probably aren't gonna say anything. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think like me. I never really trust myself with products, so if I ever have like like with applying stuff like that, so mm -hmm. if I ever have the chance to do it, I always just bring it into like the store and like ask the professionals to do it because then I have someone to blame if it just goes like, wrong. Just like do this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Help. Can you <laughs> do this for me? Jupe asks, ever tried Adobe Character? Adobe Character? What's that? I've actually never heard of that. Yeah. Yeah. So, what uh is that? The animation. Or oh. a different thing. I've definitely played with like Lottie animations uh -huh. and like body moving, which is like After Effects, uh -huh. Illustrator wow. animations. But I don't know if the uh -huh. Adobe character is a different Sounds thing. fun. Yeah, sounds fun for sure. I No, I haven't tried it, but if it's like animation, I'd definitely give it a shot. A lot of people asking if you would recommend iPad Pro versus Cintiq. Um, I we both have preferences and such. I actually never tried um, Cintiq. Um, I know people who have tried both. They say it's like apples and oranges. You know, it's like, do you prefer like more compact, like you can carry it around, or do you prefer mm -hmm. to like be remote and you just work at home? It's like a set space. Um, I personally like that I can I have the option to like carry this around wherever mm -hmm. I go. So, because um, I like to work in new environments all the time. Like in cafes mm -hmm. or like um, restaurants or not restaurants, but like you know, like yeah. libraries, you know, like places like that. So if I have a Cintiq, um, it that really wouldn't be much of an option. Um, but this is like discreet and small, so it would be easy to do that. So mm -hmm. I, I personally prefer an iPad, but um, I know people who it's just different strokes for different folks, sort of thing. Yeah, totally. Caroline asks, can you set the resolution in Sketch so that, or set the resolution in Sketch so you can set up for print sizes? You, Which is kind yeah. of what we were just speaking to earlier. Right, you can, um, but I know that there's like a maximum capacity where, like, when you like set up the size and the resolution, um, it, it can only, it, like, like 300 dpi can only do like 12 oh. inches. Yeah, which comes out to like. Thousand something pixels. Yeah, or whatever. yeah, but um, so that's what they're working on right yeah. now, I think. So my personal way of dealing with uh, the mobile application is doing the initial sketch there, mm -hmm. sending it to my desktop, and then kind of refining and doing the final piece on my Cintiq. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Um, because of that, because then I can bring in like a lower pixelation version right. of the sketch, so at least my ideas were out. But for all final pieces, I've always done it desktop. Okay. I've actually yeah. never done like a final final piece. Mm -hmm. On the iPad Pro. Okay, yeah, that, but yeah, that makes sense. I mean, <laughs> all my final pieces are from well, not all of them, but they come from the iPad Pro. So crazy different strokes for different folks. Yeah. <laughs> so any other? Yeah, there's questions? lots of. So you haven't tried this antique at all yet? No, I haven't. I'm like almost scared. Can you go to. into a store and try that? I think you can. I can't There's imagine like why not. There's like Wacom stores somewhere. Yeah, but they're just not as like, you know, big market like at Apple where yeah. you can just go in. And it's like this is a thing where someone's like, oh, I can watch Netflix and stuff on it, but also for an extra $100, I can draw. Yeah. As opposed to like, oh, this is just for drawing. Right. I mean, I don't use this for anything else. Like I, this is like strictly my work tool. Mm -hmm. Like I don't, I don't, you know, watch Netflix or anything on it or mm -hmm. YouTube. You know, only for like work purposes. Monument Valley. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nathan's saying, go in the bathroom and turn the hot water on the shower to get the room nice and steamy. It reduces dust particles and it will apply nicer for the mat. Screen. Okay, I was just like, where's this? It was going? a long winded way. <laughs> just yeah. go there, and meditate on your life. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Question yeah. your pathways to art. <laughs> okay, that's good cool. advice. So it was the animation program. Okay. Jupe. 
uh, regarding the character animator. Okay, yeah. Have you done any animation? Yeah, I I actually did animation here. Oh, on, cool. And I was hoping that if I get this finished that I could like show it to you, you guys, but I don't think we'll have time for that. But um, if I start a YouTube channel, maybe I'll show it. But <laughs> it's really easy, like you just, um, like I work uh, like frame by frame animation. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it would- Traditional-ish. Uh, yeah, so it would just be like drawing. And because there's like layers here and then like I, could, I in a sense have like a infinite amount I can mm -hmm. work with. Um, I just draw over and over, and I notice that it's really nice having that option. Awesome. Yeah. So. Yeah, I've done some animation stuff in Photoshop, and then was uh -huh. playing around with like creating different layers to create different cells uh -huh, to uh -huh. do like short gifs and stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like a wacky way. Uh huh. <laughs> it works. It's cool. Yeah. Ronnie Giro says, "Would you ever do vector designs on the live show?" Vector designs. Um, I recently got the. Uh, Adobe Draw, so Illustrator Draw, um, and I've been working with Vector there, so maybe, yeah, if uh, if it happens, Some future, yes. future yeah. Vector world. Yes, that, I definitely do want to get into Vector Illustration, though, like, learn more about it, so, yeah, perhaps in the future. Yeah, it's, I don't know, having done, like, intricate Vector Illustrations like this before, I always end up just going back to Photoshop for my own, like, uh -huh comfort zone thing. Yeah, I don't know, yeah. I like the brushes in Photoshop. I think so too. And um, I, I have a tendency to feel that like vector stuff a l feels a little more colder. Mm -hmm. I don't know, like like it just seems like, I don't know. Yeah, it seems a little colder, like just mm -hmm. digital. So it's like, again, this weird thing where it's like, well, if it's digital, is it like not as valuable or whatever? But yeah, yeah, I don't know. Like I just like the aesthetic that I give off with like, um, it's digital, but it looks sort of traditional. So, and with vector, it's sort of hard to like evoke that. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's it's like really great. I'll, I'll build something in Photoshop and then mm -hmm. bring it into Illustrator to do typographical work with uh -huh. it, if it's like a poster or uh -huh. a book and it needs an illustration. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. But for final work, it's like, as much as I can do on Photoshop, I'll just retain that. And right. maybe the future will mm -hmm. prove me wrong. Yeah. <laughs> but for now, it's still working fine. Okay, that's good. Um, question from Jose. Uh -huh. Ever had an unhappy client? And what did he or she do to correct that? Oh, what did you do to correct that situation? Unhappy client. The client can be he or she, though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me think. I don't think I've ever had a client that was like difficult to work with. Well, um, that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but again, I'm kind of like fresh on the market, sort of. Like I haven't like have been like I'm not heavily like experienced with like clients. Um, mm -hmm. Like I don't, don't have ha those battle scars yet. No, I don't. So it has yet to happen where I run into like a client that's like sort of like, you know, difficult. But so far it's been really good. You know, they've been like, it's always been positive. You know, and um, I'm waiting for it to happen though. Yeah, if it ha if it does happen, I would imagine that I would, like I, I'm pretty good when it comes to conflict. Like I don't get like super, like. Um, visually upset or anything mm. like that. So I just try my best to like resolve it. So yeah, especially when it comes to work, I try not to get too emotionally invested. So it's like, okay, mm -hmm. well, you don't like it, then I'll fix it. I mean, it's kind of the yeah. largest learning curve from mm -hmm. college is being able to allow that distance, especially when yeah. doing like client work and graphic design illustration right. of just that it's not a personal attack that For has nothing sure. to do with you. me doing something wrong. Yeah. It's just a matter of this is what they need and can I cater to their needs. Yeah, and I also know this is a, can be a problem for like some illustrators where like, um, um, so, like they'll get, they'll take critique like really personally. Mm -hmm. And that's something I kind of noticed for like, um, uh, like illustrators that were in school, like, I don't know, I feel like they can get a little sensitive with like how people re respond. But, um, you know, I try to always remember that like not every, it's, like, yeah, it's never personal. It's just like, it's not like they don't like your work. It's, it's just like sometimes like the style doesn't suit their needs yep. or, you know, like I try not to take things personally when people give me feedback. And it also it's, comes from like how tonally the feedback's provided. If it's something that's like- True, yeah. Sounds like it's given with kindness compared mm -hmm. to someone just being like, this is stupid. Yeah. And you're like, 
That's then it's not like, nice. yeah, if it's something like, if, if they were being rude, then I would probably, I would be the, probably the one to be like, well, we don't have to work in the future ever again, you know? <laughs> Which I'm sure will happen when that time does come. Yeah, because if it's like, if they're like being really rude to you, and if they're not, also if they're not like paying you what you deserve, then it's like, then why would mm -hmm. you waste your time, you know? Always remember, you can fire clients. You can, yeah. <laughs> don't ever, don't ever like, you know, like sell yourself short or like, like have 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 like self respect. If like and if people are like not offering you like the money that you deserve, then don't feel like you should still do it for exposure or anything like that. Because no, mm -hmm. you know people they should if a client approaches you, they should already have the mindset that they you they deserve your money. You know mm -hmm. because you're working. And, totally. Mm -hmm. That so, was a long answer. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. a very in depth answer that I totally can get behind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sama asks, how do you get the skin texture? The skin texture? Um, I mean, I don't it's, know if that's the grainy kind of yeah, graphite but, thing. Yeah, that's with uh, the pencil tool where I put it, lay it flat, and then it just sort of, like, I just build on top. Yeah. It's pretty easy. Yeah, the holding the pencil at an angle. Yeah, yeah. Mm hmm All right, so we're at that point. We've just gone over the 9.30 mark in which if you want these awesome pin, sticker, mm -hmm. and uh, prints. print combo. Yay, yeah. That's like, show your, so good. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're all awesome. Yeah. I can vouch. Mm -hmm. Show your awesome hype in the <laughs> channel about yes. how much you love these things. Yeah. <laughs> or what you're going to do with them. Mm -hmm. Where are you going to put that pin? Where are you going to put that sticker? Where are you gonna hang the prints? Yes. I'll put it all over my room. Paint us a picture. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> See what some people respond. Swag. <laughs> hey, all caps. <laughs> and the uh, tablet we're using is the iPad Pro. Mm -hmm. The the biggest version one. Version one. Yeah, version <laughs> one, yeah. I think so, yeah. But yeah, the, the larger of two sizes because mm -hmm. it has more surface area to work on. Yeah. Of which I've recently just been borrowing a larger one, uh -huh. but I own a smaller one. Okay. And I want to throw the smaller one in the trash. Yeah, it feels so. kind of like dumb, you know, like you're like doing this. <laughs> but um, It's really yeah. there for your carpal tunnel. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the office needs art. It's a good reason most mm -hmm. offices don't have good art. Yeah. Or it's been like designed by someone who's the interior decorator who thought it was a good idea. Yeah, and then it and looks kind of weird yeah. and kitschy. So that's a, that's a good. That's a good. In a one. studio, hopefully that's gonna provide good inspiration. Yes. Yeah. That sounds nice. Yeah. Certainly, no, that's helped me. Wear the pin. Wear it everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> like your name tag. <laughs> yeah, the uh, then you'll get a lot of questions as to whether or not Illustrator is your favorite. Oh, of which, yeah. That'll be awkward when mm -hmm. you're like, no. It's <laughs> 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 oh. so my second favorite. Mm -hmm. Sticker on my football. Football? Will Can that last? Stuff? Yeah. Also, is that like a <laughs> soccer football or like an American football football? Because yeah. soccer football, maybe. It's really? Kind of, well, Soccer? it's smoother. I guess so, but you're kicking it around. Yeah. The other one's being like baby hugged by sweaty men. Oh. Right? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Which doesn't sound appealing at all. Oh, they're post they have motivational posters. Is it like communist Russia motivational oh posters? Oh my gosh. Or like <laughs> Great job, everyone. Keep up great work. I hope it's the latter. Yeah. <laughs> like keyboard types you. <laughs> More questions about uh, who your biggest illustration inspirations are. Um, A lot of uh, Asian American female illustrators. Yeah, I mentioned them the first day. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, like Ping Zhu is one of them, um, Lisk Fang. Now people can go back and see if you're saying the same names or if you were lying. Yeah, <laughs> Victor Nai, Julian Tamaki, um, Yuko Shimizu, you know, all those people. Victor Nai also won like a ton of awards She's and stuff. crazy, yeah. yeah, she's just gangster, like putting everything <laughs> out, you know. Like she did a, a cover for Neil Gaiman with his new book. Yep. And I know she also did like this wine, like or like this alcoholic beverage, like it's like this huge, like, it's beautiful, elegant, you know, just awesome. like her work, so. So we have a winner. Yay! Thanks everyone for hyping up. But the winner today is Jimmy Mitchell. Congratulations, we'll Jimmy Mitchell. We'll be getting Mitchell. all these things. Very jealous. Oh, the fanning didn't quite, okay, there we go. Yay, that's an awesome prize. Yeah. yeah very jealous. It is a hefty pin, so uh -huh. make sure it's secured on something. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a full inch. Uh-huh. Nice congratulations. Yes, congratulations. I'm gonna have to like hunt you down now to like steal it from you. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be awesome to see pictures of how these things are used, both like, yeah, like the a, socks, the pillows, right, these right. Like, like a like a response. Yeah. Like. I love seeing stuff like that when like handing a poster over to someone who bought one, yeah. seeing like it framed or Aww, used in some yeah, way. Right. Yeah, that is always like a satisfying feeling, I think. Everyone's jelly. Better be. Yeah, I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Awesome. Mm -hmm. What uh, what status are you at now? I haven't looked over in. Oh yeah, it's a just while. filling stuff in. Yeah, nice. it's it's like a coloring book. Yeah, I mean, you guys saw like what the end result will pretty much look like. So even if it's not finished today, you can still like. I mean, it'll be uploaded, so, but you have a general idea, you know, because I tend to stick pretty true to, mm -hmm. like, the original. And did you select this palette that you're using earlier, or is it something that's kind of being decided along the way? Along the way, cool. yeah, because I don't really, like, I don't plug in the colors until, like, the drawing is finished. Um, I think it was this, there was this article that this one graphic designer wrote. I remember he talked about how, like, he doesn't plug in the colors until, like everything's done because mm -hmm. like colors can, like because you can you feel almost like limitless when you're yep. choosing out colors. So when you have that sort of like um, limit, then you become smarter with like choosing the color palette you want to use. Yep. And it becomes more appropriate for like the work that you're doing. So. Totally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I've noticed a lot of the process of how collecting layers and working in that way mm -hmm. has provided that allowance when, if I did make a color choice that I thought was like the direction I wanted to go and realize uh -huh. halfway through it's not, yeah, I have yeah. the layers separated in a way that I can go back and like adjust them as right. opposed to flattening it and then being kind of stuck with a blue or right, like whatever right. it was. Right, right, um, yeah. But I know with like the printing world of like screen printing and whatnot has definitely helped Mm. limit my palette to knowing like these are the three colors and if I go away from it I have to like catch myself and pull back. Right, right. And knowing and uh, having that is really like important I think like limiting yourself with like something like as important and like as like you know crazy as like colors so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Daniel is asking could you cycle through the layers go through them quickly just to see her various levels. Oh yeah, sure, so. Um, toggle, 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 toggle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so right now, if I can turn everything off. So this is the skin layer, basically. And then after the skins, I get tend to get a little messy with mm -hmm. like where everything is. This is like, oh, this is like hair, as well as like clothing and a bit of the background. And by messy, like how the pink is kind of in the top left. Yeah, where it's yeah. It's like a little looser. Right, right. And then right here is a like uh, another layer of like hair and clothing. Mm -hmm. And then this one, I don't know what this one is. I think it's blank. Nothing actually. layer. That oh. is also fun to discover. Yeah, this is actually the eyes. So like right here for. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, but that's the eyes. Um, and She's this got one, purple eyes. Yeah, and this was a lighten filter, I think. Yeah, soft light, and that's like for some of the pink um, mm -hmm. in there. And this one is the greens. This one's like the pinks. And then this is like the layer that I'm probably not gonna use. It was the color of the floor, but I don't like it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's going back to the color, kind of like tweaking yeah, issues that mm -hmm. happen. So up to up to this point, it's just like coloring in like the within the lines mm -hmm. of what I've already drawn, and then after that is when it becomes oh, like the shadows, you know, like, mm -hmm. and that's this is where I have the most fun, I think, where I like 
you know, play, like I, I make my own rules, you know, like there's no like line to color in. Um, I figure out like where the lighting would be and all that. And um, this would be the highlight, like where the light hits you. Mm -hmm. So the shadows and then light. And then normally at the end of the illustration, I put in a layer of a color and I play with this one a lot until I get like the sort of like filter that I like. And that's a um, difference. Um, yeah, it's Labor. in difference. Yeah, but if I do this, it's like crazy. But you know, I I play around with like <laughs> that's indifference. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I play around with like all these like options that I have. But normally it's like a it's indifference or like um, sometimes enlighten or um, multiply. But yeah. it's just to like um, bring a sort of like general cohesiveness to the work at the end. Because yep. right now you can notice already like if I don't have that, it seems a little cold. Mm -hmm. You know, which is not. Someone good. also mentioned that uh, mm -hmm. all the characters look pensive, which they love. Yeah, but they kind of like, do. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Where am I going? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Why did but. I choose this career? <laughs> I ask myself every day. <laughs> While getting on the plane yeah. to go somewhere you don't want to go. Yeah. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> yes, this is generally what I have. Mm. Also, someone asked about uh, what kind of story you would want to tell if doing a sequential thing, which I think we spoke a little bit about stories yeah. yesterday or the day before. Yeah, and I feel like I mentioned it in doing yeah, this but, too, but as uh, a curious follow-up too, mm -hmm. since like the horror thing, what kind of horror story oh. would you want to tell? I don't know. <sighs> That's really hard. I feel like it would have it would have like some sort of monster in it, for sure. Or the opposite, where it's like kind of like instilled fear, where it's like you don't know it, but it's actually there the whole time. It's you kind of the actually... it follows thing, where yeah. it's like you don't see the monster, exactly. but it's, it's there. I feel like those kind of horror movies are always the most successful, so and it's also difficult to do. So mm -hmm. we'll see, but um, that's something I would do. Yeah, it would be because I mean the I think modern horror stuff too is kind of allowing more and more for like colorful but having a disturbing undertone too. Yeah. So like the colors and stuff don't necessarily have to be like blacks and reds. Mm -hmm, for sure. Yeah. So, Especially with all these sweet mm -hmm. 80s like synthy yeah. soundtracks and stuff. Yeah. But um to answer like what I would what story I would tell if I was to do sequential, I, it's actually something I'm planning on doing eventually. Um I was thinking I would uh, write a story about like um you know Asian American identity. Um, as well as um, queer identity, as well as um, like spiritual identity. So that would like, um, and for sure, like Jillian Tamaki, like a great uh, mm -hmm. storyteller. Like she's been a big influence on like that sort of story. So I would probably work on something like that. Awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I always saw her work as being very like tied to. Did you read Blankets? Craig yes. Thompson. Like, Blankets is my favorite. It's amazing. And it was actually the first graphic novel I ever read. Really? Yeah, and I remember... It's a great way to start. It <laughs> is, yeah. I, I had a good good place to begin. Um, it It's... And I read it actually when I was young. And you know, like, it has pretty adult... Yeah. Yeah, adult themes. And I remember I was, like, hiding. And I, I was Christian, Which is kind too. of like a reflection of what's happening in the story. Yeah, yeah. And it's kind of crazy because, like, whenever I think about that story, because... I think that is a comic that sort of sh like is very reminiscent of my own life mm -hmm. too. And like, I remember reading it when I was like Christian growing up, and like reading it, it's about like religion. So I was like really scared. And then I read it again when I got older, and then I w and I left the faith, and like yep. it was just co completely insane. Yeah, yeah, I was like, I never thought I would be here when reading this again, but in a totally different mindset, you know. So yeah, it. It's a huge inspiration for like why to create stories at all. For sure. For me. Yeah. The, uh, I, f I ended up meeting mm -hmm. Craig Thompson when uh, <gasps> Habibi came out. No way. And he's like the nicest dude. I bet. And it oh was like gosh. our birthdays are the same. So uh -huh. we ended up like sharing a cupcake or something. That's weird. so cute. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. But, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really nice to like meet. Someone you've looked up to for so long and yeah, like, oh, for sure. you're genuinely just like a good super guy. nice. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm so happy that you actually met him. It's cool. Also, Andre says, I met Craig in Portugal in a comic book event. He's amazing. Yeah, I bet. Oh my gosh, I really want to meet him now. Oh, as a flip, <laughs> do you know a Bone, that comic? Yes, that of course. So Bone's delightful and everyone should read it. But right, yeah. I ended up meeting Jeff Smith and he totally spelt my name wrong. Oh, really? Oh, no. But I think he was like super tired. Okay. So I have yeah. this thing that has L O G I N in my book, <laughs> like forever. <laughs> That's funny. But yeah. 
Aww. So when you get to that book <laughs> signing point of your life, when this book does come out, yes, I'll, I'll be you're better. You have to deal with hours of like, yeah, just signing and ugh. signing. I mean, I do like interacting with people, so hopefully that doesn't happen. But totally, yeah. Maria says, Quiet Place was great. Watched it last week and <gasps> loved what they did with the atmosphere and tension. I'm watching it tonight. Yeah, I yeah. watched it last night. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. So I gave my update to her. Yeah. <laughs> you if anyone's seen it, do uh -huh. a little like thumbs up, thumbs down. Uh huh. Yeah, I actually want to see yeah. like, you know, what people would have thought. But um, you said it wasn't as like great. Like I liked it and uh -huh. I think it's really well made. Uh -huh. um, and I love. John and yeah. Emily. Yeah, right. So like, also, I love The Office. So I have a very touching yes. gym connection. Oh. But <laughs> the fact that like everything's done incredibly well, but a lot of the like creatures and themes and things in it, I felt are kind of like, you can see where they're inspired from. Uh -huh. It's not like a new, new thing. Right, right. So a lot of it would be like, oh, I'm, I can see where you pulled this from. Mm -hmm. Or a lot of like Last of Us. Oh, connection. So okay. like I love The Last of Us and that uh -huh. game's the greatest thing ever made. <laughs> so like the fact that it has elements of that in it or like the road or things, you can uh -huh. see where things are being pulled from. Okay, um, that's cool. Yeah. But it's still like really well made. Yeah, so. I just think it's crazy how it was John Krasinski that yeah. you know wrote and directed it. Which because, opens up a lot of opportunity for the future. Yeah, for sure. And like I would have never really seen him as a type. But thumbs up, thumbs up. Great. Amazing. Awesome, yeah. Uh, for those asking about submitting to the portfolio review, if you're in the Behance channel, and over on the right-hand side, there's a portfolio review tab, which contains a link, and in that link, you can submit whatever kind of artwork you want us to look at, and then we will do two portfolio reviews okay, kind of towards yeah. the end mm -hmm. with uh, 30, 40 minutes left. And the winner of that will get, uh, or the two chosen for that will yes. get a print signed of this beautiful piece. By me. <laughs> Not by me. Yeah. <laughs> that would make no sense. Hopefully Mike says, like the, the main daughter is actually deaf and the entire cast learned sign language. Oh, okay. That's awesome. I am always curious about those kind of yeah, things. Yeah, right. So she's like actually deaf. Yeah. I guess. Um, okay, yeah, that's cool. I really want to learn ASL actually. It seems like something that I think everyone should there's Should this. Learn. Yeah, is that I love you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The but, most important. Yeah. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. Ryan's asking, do you only use iPad Pros? Which, yes. Mm -hmm. um, or do, I, do you ever bring any of this stuff into Photoshop for like? Yeah, I I do it sometimes. Yeah, I definitely bring it over to Photoshop in in the occasion that I think it's necessary. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Welcome to everyone who's joining. Mm -hmm. I think um, for the portfolio review, um, I think it's, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. I have not seen Ghost Stories, but I'm very intrigued too. Mm -hmm. Which is another movie. Ghost? Ghost Stories. Ghost Stories? Which yeah, it's like a one? three short stories, I think. Okay. It's also horror. Is it kind of like Holidays? Do you know I think that? so. Yeah. Did you watch it? No, but I know of it. Yeah, don't. <laughs> okay. Or like, uh, not that Trick or Treat's three stories, but mm -hmm. it kind of is. Okay. They all tie together. Yeah, right. I just remember watching like the Easter one. And I was like scarred for life. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's like ABCs of Death or like mm -hmm. VHS or any right, of that stuff. Right. Right. But yeah, I don't know. I'm very like lukewarm on those mm. usually. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Are there? Any other questions that people have for Sarah while the coloring is kind of continuing on its fine way? Yes. What kind of music do you listen to when you work? Netflix music? Um, yeah. The music? <laughs> um, the music I listen to, <laughs> it's usually like, uh, there's a band called Hyogo, um, and I, it, it's a Korean band. Um, it's like a rock band, and I love their songs. Um, and I usually listen to songs like on repeat. I tend to do that. So I I always listen to Tomboy. It's my favorite song. So if you ever get on a chance. On repeat forever? Yes, Whoa. forever. I just really like the the lyrics that he comes up with or the band comes up with. They're just so 
poignant and eloquent. Mm-hmm. So I would give it like even if it's in Korean, I would try to like give it a listen and like look up the lyrics at the end because it's so poetic. Yeah. Nice. Mm-hmm. What kind of music do you listen outside of work? Outside of work, um, same people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot of a lot of Korean bands. Um, uh, I also really love uh, Cigarettes After Sex, like the band. Mm-hmm. They um, got more famous recently because of The Handmaiden's Tale. There's like a song in there that, or Nothing's Gonna Hurt You, mm-hmm. or something like that. Also Beach House, really mm-hmm. like Beach House. I um, cannot work to Beach House. Really? I'll just fall asleep. Yeah, and they're actually from Baltimore. So okay. yeah, another reason why I'm like sticking with them to listen cool. to stuff. Yeah. Western. Yeah, Angela's asking, when's it necessary to bring your work into Photoshop? Um, when there are things that I want to fix that I, I know I can't do on here. Like, if I want to change the levels mm-hmm. of like the colors and stuff like that, I know I can't do this on here, so I would bring it over to Photoshop then. Mm-hmm. And I tend to like bring it over when it's like a big piece. So like something like this, I can see that I would bring over to Photoshop. I don't think I will. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, if it's like a big piece that I tend to like and, and I care about it a lot, then I bring it over to Photoshop to like adjust it more. If it's also something that's gonna be printed. So I might bring this over to Photoshop, but not well on the live, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. And now you're going line work on top of the colored yeah, for just, like refinements? Yeah, I'm just erasing away like um, like some of the colors that I do not want there. There's um, always clean up. Yes, <laughs> along the way. Andre asks, what about if the client's needs differ f- from the image? Do you do it via SketchUp or take it to Photoshop? Oh, so like revisions? Revisions, I would have to pay, or I have to charge extra for that because I'm not making just one anymore. I'm making two separate pieces. So yeah, mm-hmm. do that. Do you um, have like a certain number of revisions you provide? like feedback rounds or something in like a contractual agreement or? Um, I, I mean, I say I'll do them if you need me to, but I probably won't do more than three just cause then it's like, okay. Yeah. Then I, I literally have nothing else to give. <laughs> yeah, three is, yeah. two or three usually seems like the good. Good place to. Amount see. of rounds you can allow for yeah. before it's like, all right, change order or something. Right, right. Because I feel like if you do more than that, it becomes something totally different from what you started. So that's like not. And they're like actually, we hate this and need this direction. You're like, well, you should have said it way earlier. Yeah, exactly. So it becomes like this whole other problem. So I just tend to say like three max. Mm-hmm. If it's more than that, then you know I need a whole new, whole new you know, assignment. You know, so that's like another, another, another charge. Yeah. Steven asks, what opacity setting is being used on the color? Um, it's always on like the um, 100, but I do change it. Like once it's all done, um, one and done, like. Um, I go over it and like adjust it if I have to, if it doesn't seem right, you know, mm-hmm. but it's, all, it's typically always at like a hundred. Okay. Yeah. But then the blending itself is the thing that's the determining factor. E- the blending? Yeah, like how it, what opac, not the opacity, but like if you're putting difference on or. Yeah, any yeah, of that yeah, stuff. stuff like that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Color's looking great. Awesome, Just thank feedback. You. Thank you. <laughs> Wayne Smith asks, if you could have any animal as a pet that would be docile, what would it be? A tiger. Yeah. A tiger would be really cool. Just sitting on the tiger as your bench while you like. Yeah, the right to battle. <laughs> <laughs> Drawing battle. Yeah. I think they're just like cool, really cool creatures. Yeah. And we should take care of them and stuff. But <laughs> David um, Oro asks, do you use any other apps? Also said, just joined. Uh, so in case. Okay. Yeah. Um, Not really. Yeah. I mean, I just got into Adobe Draw, yeah, but most of the time, most of, for the most part, I, I stick with this one, yeah, mm-hmm. Photoshop Sketch. Mm-hmm. Awesome, and a reminder that you can go to the Behance page and submit your portfolio that we can then review in about 30 minutes, mm-hmm. of which we'll try to see how much of this coloring gets done by that point. Yes. Um, if you just sent the printout as it is, uh, wherever it gets to at the end of the day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it will definitely be finished before it, it gets sent out to everybody. So, 
That won't take me too long afterward. Martin asks, have we got a name for this piece of work? Is there a title? I didn't even think about that. I actually don't think about the title until it's finished because it's like naming a child. Before it's I born. Guess. Yeah, before it's born. Like I feel like you'd have to know its personality a little more or something like that, I don't know. But um, I guess I'm thinking like San Francisco, probably nothing, mm -hmm. nothing too special. I don't get too crazy with the titles. Yeah, but. Mm -hmm. Easy to uh, pass on and digest as opposed to giving it some weird abstract name. Yeah, it's like uh, Sarah Jung Peace number 30, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> it's like there's the certain album titles or like song lists uh -huh. where it'll just be like, all right, it's all lowercase and there's like weird backlashes yeah, in it. And like yeah. now it's hard to find. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but this is probably just gonna be called like San Francisco, yeah, or something like that. Nice. Do you usually name your pieces, or just kind of like put them out in the world? Um, I, I like I don't really make it like publicly. Like this is called this. Like I just put it out there, mm -hmm. and then when I have to title it, like when I'm uploading it to Behance or something yeah. like that, then I just put it on. You know. Cool. But yeah. I mean, I'd say that's pretty much the same as. What I've experienced, or yeah. like the folder organizations, right, like, right, kind of like a if a company has like working beta name for a project, and uh -huh. then the release name is going to be different, right, right, yeah, and it's just kind of like, um, yeah, for filing purposes, mm -hmm. it's like, well, what does this? What's the first word that comes to mind for this for me? So later, if I try to think of it, it'll it'll be easier to find, mm -hmm. you know, so. Like when I look at it, it just kind of reminds me of travel, so I might just call it travel. <laughs> but Trabsies. You know. Yeah, Trabsies. <laughs> yeah, I also so. saw a question of if you had any favorite childhood movies. <gasps> childhood movies, Studio Ghibli films. I love all of them. I love Spirited Away. Yeah. Is that a, what you'd say your favorite? Yes. Is? Yeah, for childhood movie. Yeah, just because I mean I don't think it's just for children either. Like, I think it's for adults as well. I used to be obsessed with Halloween Castle, but I recently changed, like, mm -hmm, I hopped onto mm -hmm. the bad wagon of, like, Spirited Away. Just because, like... Those have always been my two yeah, toggling faves. Same. Like, Halloween Castle has phenomenal um, character design. And, um, you know, Spirited Away is just so... Like, I really like coming-of-age mm -hmm, movies. Mm -hmm. and, and that one just does it so well and totally. there's really nothing quite like it yeah like I watch that movie and each time I'm so I learn something new and I'm always blown away so Totoro yeah. is one of those weird ones that I remember watching a long time ago yeah loving and then re-watching it and not being able to stand the movie because the younger daughter drives me crazy oh really she's just screaming May? the entire movie yeah I mean she, she actually looking at that um that um, movie, like watching it, it kind of reminds me of me and my sister, mm -hmm. actually. So, and I remember when I first watched it, I watched it with my sister. So, I, that, gotcha. yeah, so like it's more like I like it because of like association rather than like the story itself. Because the story's pretty slow. It is. Ultimately. And do you know the conspiracy theory about that? No. So, it, there's a conspiracy theory that May actually died. Oh. Yeah. And now like, I should rewatch it. I might like it more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're dead. Dead children. <laughs> Just the fact there's something other than like, what I'm like, oh cool, Kappa. Oh, it's over. Yeah, because like it, it's it. So it, it, yeah. The conspiracy theory is that they actually both die in the end. Because if you watch it, like the mother, like, um, she, uh, looks outside the window and they're outside, but they she can't see them even uh, though they're outside of the cat bus. Okay. So and they say like the cat bus is actually like the bus that takes you to like the afterlife. Oh, yeah, the much but, cuter version of the like moth. Yeah, 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 yeah. I guess so. Okay. So yeah, that's Interesting. pretty crazy to think. Okay, about. maybe I'll rewatch it now with this like conspiracy theory right. understanding. Yeah, and just like the movie itself is pretty good. I like the subtlety of it. Yeah. There's also a question of if you've seen Grave of the Fireflies. Yes, that one is like. Sad as hell. That's uh, so sad. And you guys know that that candy that the little girl eats from the movie? I actually got that recently, and they are delicious. Nice. <laughs> it's really good. Yeah, so Great with Fireflies, such a great movie. Yeah. I think um, the most recent one, The Wind Rises, mm -hmm. sort of had like the similar sort of like kind of like voice to it. Mm. Yeah. But I'm, I'm curious if The Wind Rises works for kids because no. it worked for me as an adult because yeah. I'm like very attached to that point in history and like these characters going through stages and stuff but yeah. like I feel like a kid would just be kind of bored they'd probably fall asleep yeah. yeah I don't think I don't think they'd find it interesting that much yeah 
which is like a lot of my childhood Disney loves. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they all hold up, but uh -huh. like Beauty and the Beast and Little Mermaid yeah. <laughs> are both still great. Yeah, they're great. Yeah, for sure. Aladdin, I always enjoy Aladdin. Yeah, Aladdin has that same issue for me with the Totoro thing where like there's really? too much yelling. Oh, really? Because like, I don't, I don't think know. there's too much yelling. Like who's mm. like... The genie. This yells a oh. lot. And I'm like, I now just live through like PTSD or something. Okay. Like everything's <laughs> always yelling and I'm like, I can't. <laughs> I can't so like deal with this. watching all those, I have so much sympathy for my parents now uh -huh. because like having watched Nickelodeon cartoons. Oh yeah. And now watching any of them, I'm like, oh my god, really? like what was I doing? Because so, like okay. the angry beavers are just like yelling all the time, <laughs> and like everyone's yelling. I imagine that you probably wouldn't enjoy um, SpongeBob then. I loved it. Really? But now, okay, yeah. well, the art in it and like the acrylic paintings and stuff and they do zoom ins are like some of my favorites. Oh, yeah, like, like those that moments. That stuff's awesome. Yeah, yeah, um, right. So I love it for that time, but now I'm like, that's kind of the thing with a lot of anime too is like a lot of yelling. Yeah, that's true. It's people just like always screaming and like over the top, which is like great <laughs> for characters, uh -huh. but like I like subtlety too much right. that it's like, just chill. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you have to yell to tell us what you're <laughs> thinking? <laughs> But fully coolly, still the best. Mm -hmm. Question from Maria: mm -hmm. Do you play video games, and if so, any favorites? I actually don't play video games. Um, I just never like. I remember I tried playing um, Minecraft. You okay. Know, but. Um, and it was fun, but like I get dizzy like really easily. Like, so VR is not your jam. No, not <laughs> VRs. Any, yeah, like I always like, and even when like my partner is playing a video game, like I'll only I could only watch for like a limited amount of time before I get like nauseous. Corey puke. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> how do you stare at this for so long? And then he's like, well, it works, it's fine. But I'm like, I, I can't. I get all nauseous and stuff. So. Yeah, same for you. No, that I was agreeing to uh, Siobhan Frazier mm -hmm. about Iron Giant being cryworthy and awesome. That movie oh, yeah. is awesome. It, it's really good. It kind of has like that E.T. vibe. Yeah, yeah. but like mm -hmm. without the creepy alien. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and The Art of Sleeping Beauty is my favorite background art of any Disney movie. Yeah, ever. Um, what's her name? Uh, the artist that did all of like the... I thought it was like a slew of, because there's a video you could find on YouTube of like a bunch of old Monet looking dudes out uh -huh. in the woods painting trees. And they're like, this dude worked on Sleeping Beauty. And it's just this like 60 year old dude painting trees like they're from <laughs> Sleeping Beauty, I love but wearing it. like a suit. Isn't there like the, that artist that like did a lot of the Disney stuff? Oh my gosh, I'm blanking I'm on sure. the name. Yeah, I feel it was like Mary something. Yeah, but there was an artist that specifically worked on like a lot of the Disney backgrounds, mm -hmm. and she did like the the, the small world act. Like, okay. Yeah, like the 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 at the theme park. Interesting. Yeah, I forgot her name. Yeah, the uh, really there's a pretty interesting thing too. Is there was that transition where like when Snow White was coming out, mm -hmm. Disney's whole establishment of this illustrated world was creating like realistic looking background paintings, uh -huh. and like if you look at Snow White herself, she's based on people studying human motions very naturally, so she feels very natural. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when the, oh, it was Mary Blair. Mary Blair, yes, yeah. thank you. Yeah, I was like, who is that person? I can't believe I'm blanking on her name, yeah. Ivan Earl did the main art direction. Okay, yeah, Mary Blair, yeah. Yeah, She's so Sleeping person. Beauty as a movie is pretty boring, but like, it's visually gorgeous. It's, so yes, no blame yeah. for falling asleep during it. Right. I totally would too, but I also fell asleep watching The Road. <laughs> so yeah, whatever. yeah. But Sleeping Beauty, it's beautiful. Yeah, I remember I was like doing this like Disney marathon, and then for all of them, I was like, ah, fun, you know, this is great. And then I got to Sleeping Beauty, and I was like, this is gorgeous. Like this art is like amazing. Like it really stands out. It has all sure. that like Gregorian monk singing music too. Yeah, yeah, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. The uh, when they did the transition to 101 Dalmatians, yeah, they had that whole like weird. And stuff not lining up, kind of like more of this background uh -huh. style for like the scenes of Paris. Yeah, and yeah. I guess Disney like was very disappointed in the production and the art direction, really? and like went to the guy who was in charge and uh -huh. said how disappointed he was because it wasn't like the sleeping or uh, the Snow White kind of backgrounds. Uh -huh. I mean, and so that I guy like 
lost his mind and quit animation forever. What? Because Disney like was so disappointed in him. And then that movie was like a huge success. It was. Yeah. I love 101 Dalmatians. Like actually that movie, I always get so like, you know the intro of that movie? It's like the dots. Yeah. And like it's so good. Like the, like just if you just watch the intro, it's done really well. And like I'll never forget like It'll be like writing something, and there's like dot like blinking from like this like the Dalmatian spot. Yeah, like it's just yeah, the art in it's really good. Yeah, yeah, I can't believe he did that because it was stylized. Yeah, people weren't ready for it. That's... And by people, I mean Walt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the animator or the art director was ahead of his time. So yeah, good for him. The uh, what's your favorite Disney villain? I I know one. Um. This isn't anyone's question besides my own, I guess. Yeah, Maleficent. <laughs> okay, Maleficent. Okay. Um, I don't know. I think I had one, but I, I forgot. Maleficent comes to mind first. What's anyone else's favorite Disney character? Yeah, I'm villain? curious about that. I mean, heroes are kind of boring. The villains are way cooler. Yes. Yeah. And they Personally, have like a, Ursula. Hmm. Yeah, I was thinking Ursula too. Yeah, Ursula's pretty cool, and she's like pretty badass. <laughs> it's like Ursula and Cruella de Vil character design wise are uh -huh. awesome. They also yeah. happen to be the two female ones. Exactly, yeah. Ursula's great. Big Hero 6, also fantastic. Oh my gosh, I cried so much with that one when <laughs> the brother died. I was like, no. I was on a plane to Japan. Uh huh. So I was like crying eating salmon next to people. Oh, who were probably just no. commuting or something. Yeah. I remember when that movie came out, I was like super excited because I was like, is he Asian? <laughs> you know? I was like, or Did is they this do a, it? Yeah, I was like, or is this a white kid with black hair? You it's know? also based on a Marvel comic, which I still have not read. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Huh. It's like a Stan Lee kind of inspired, more modern Oh, I, I, I can see that. Yeah. yeah, I can see that. Yeah. But yeah, I was really excited when it came out. I was like, is this kid, is he? <laughs> I was super excited. Mm -hmm. And like the, it's like, a, a, what's the place called? Like Neo San Fran Tokyo? San oh, Fran Tokyo Neo Tokyo or, or? San Fran Tokyo or something like yeah, that? Yeah, something like that. Neo Tokyo is Akita. Yeah, yeah, right. Which is right. a whole other nightmare. Yes. It's not nearly as charming. Yes, um, but yeah, I, re I remember I really liked that um, environment. And I was like, if I could live anywhere, that would be the place. Pulling out some stuff from Kung Fu Panda, uh -huh. Tai Long. Kung Fu Panda is underrated and awesome. I think so too. Jack Black is great. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Sir Hiss is awesome. Also, the music from Robin Hood is sweet. Like the design stuff in oh, Robin Hood is awesome. Okay. Rob I actually haven't watched Robin Hood oh, really? in a while. Yeah, that's something I It's need like to around watch. that Jungle Book era. Yeah. Where it's still kind of like pencil sketchy looking. I remember that threw me off a lot as a kid because the um the bear from the jungle book is the same as the bear from uh like Robin Hood, yeah. like the design. Baloo the gone like rogue. Yeah, 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 yeah. Except the 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 bear in Robin Hood is brown, and the bear in Jungle Book is gray. So I, but it looked exactly the same. So I was just like, it's like, are they brothers? Like I remember like thinking that they're just when I was tying a kid. all the Disney universes together. Yeah, it was actually sort of exciting. I was like, wow, they actually exist out of this movie. This one seems way less chill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Also, yes, Disney owns everything. Okay. Yeah. Yes, they do. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Which is great for Marvel. Disappointing for uh, creator-owned content. Mm. So this one. Big Yanni asks, how do you understand your light source for the illustration for making shadows in the area? Um, actually, I might move on to that because just to show you guys how I work. But um, like I mentioned earlier, uh, like I... Um, like working with perspective um, and just practicing that since I was like, uh, since I came to college, um, like lighting and stuff like that became sort of almost second like nature. So if you want to get good with like lighting and stuff like that, I would say practice doing perspective drawings, like working with like different, like really like dramatic, you mm -hmm. know, perspectives, like bird's eye, like all the way from the ground up or like, um, you know, and, and, and the, or like worm's eye, mm. I forgot, or I'm switching those two around. But um, yeah, try doing that and I'll, I promise you, you'll get better at like lighting. Mm -hmm. But since that came up and I always have f more fun with lighting stuff, so I'm just gonna move on to that because I nice. actually want you guys to see how I work. Kind of gets into yeah. playing around with how different colors play off of each other when they're directly next to it. Because the shadows can be like cool or warm. Yeah. Which is real nice. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna go with this color. 
So this color, <laughs> this pastel, like this neon sort of pink, like I was trying to fit this into this illustration like the whole time yesterday and I just couldn't figure out like a great way to do it but like I'm just probably gonna add it into the shadows. Okay. Also a question that's kind of related, mm -hmm. Noah asks where do you get your inspiration for color palettes? Um, other illustrators. So when I first started off with like I didn't actually figure out color until I graduated college. It was something I really struggled with like a lot, but um, I started figuring it out more when um, I looked at other artists and what colors like they chose. Because I know that for um, for a lot of uh, illustrations, sometimes the stylistic choice is that it's like or something that shows like the style of the illustrator is the color palettes that they use. And um, if I'm, you can trust them, yeah, if you can trust them, <laughs> yeah. And I remember like really wanting that. So I looked at a lot of like different illustrators and what kind of colors they used. Mm -hmm. And um, that just really helped like understand like, okay, this is what I like too. And yeah. Mm -hmm. Totally. And I think it's something that just kind of develops over time naturally too. Like yeah. you start realizing certain clothing you buy a certain colors yes, and like you combine sure. things certain ways and you're like, oh wait, this is kind of like naturally this. my style. Yeah. Right, yeah. That definitely does happen. Yeah, there's a, I've done things too where kind of going back to the Pinterest thing is just mm -hmm. creating boards that are color specific or like yeah. project color specific. So uh -huh. it'll be like, oh, I just stumbled upon this typographical thing that uses this like aqua green and this orange together I really like. Uh -huh. I'm going to take a quick screenshot and save it. Right, right. As like future reference. Uh huh. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, right. and you know, yeah, it, it just helps like just to constantly look at what people um, like. Uh, use for colors mm -hmm. and yeah, just looking at a lot of color palettes. It's overwhelming. There's a lot of colors. Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot. Yeah, <laughs> and thank God that um, and something that helped for me when I first started experimenting with color was that I would save the color palette that from illustrations that I liked. So mm -hmm. I would like uh, bring it over to Photoshop and like take all the swatches and then totally. practice with that. It's also yeah. funny how like it doesn't change. Like, do you know Michael Cho? Michael Cho. He's in Toronto. He does like comic book art stuff, but uh -huh, it's a lot of like yeah. two color palette thing. Uh huh. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But when I finally met him after like years of following him, uh -huh. we were sharing ice cream, talking about the Boston Celtics for some reason. But he was <laughs> like, "Oh, I took the color palette from your piece from like two years ago and wow. used it for my thing." And I'm like, "Wait, what? I've been taking your palettes randomly too." That's so, so we funny. had this like crossover mutual understanding. Wow. Yeah, see like that happens. Like thank God you don't like, you know, copyright color yeah. palettes. <laughs> Thankfully you can. Yeah. And no one can really like do anything. Yeah. yeah which is good. <laughs> Nathan also sounds sounds like me with typefaces, choosing fonts is the worst. Yeah, yeah. It's do you ever have to deal with font choice situations? That's why it's convenient to have uh, graphic design friends and a partner who does graphic design because mm -hmm. I get clueless when it comes to that, so I always like ask for help with it. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that's like going back to the comic discussions of how there's like the penciler who does all the storyboarding, mm -hmm. who's probably the anchor, but then there's like a colorist, there's the typographical choice for uh -huh. like doing word bubbles, but the fact right. that everyone has their own uh -huh. for sure. skill set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you ever have someone color your work? No, I've colored yeah. someone else's work though. Yeah. I, I was a colorist um, intern two or th a year ago, two years ago. Yeah, and it was for this uh, comic um, in Korea. So mm -hmm. that's a that's like work itself. Like totally. colorists, like they don't get enough credit for sure for the work that they do because that sh stuff like can get really difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like, depending on who the colorist is, you realize how much the color actually influences the final art. Yes, when for Initially sure. it's like, oh, it's just filling in, but it's also what kind of palette, how yeah. you're filling it in, what textures you're adding to someone's line work. Exactly, yeah, so it's difficult, man, yeah. It's its own cool form of collaboration, yeah, I think. Yeah, and, and art itself, so. There's a question from Bigyani mm -hmm. asking, should we avoid using black color, is that true? Black color? Yeah, I know there's certain things where like, it always goes back for me with the Renoir and 
the debate of him using pure black uh-huh. for paintings as opposed to like mixing it so it's never true black and it's more like a deep purple or a deep oh, blue. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know. I So for me, it was like they told me not to, so I didn't. <laughs> but mm-hmm. I notice now that I use black blacks when I have to mm-hmm. and they never really do anything. Yeah, I guess... Just do it, you yeah. know? Like, try it out, you know? Just because it's like a rule doesn't mean you have to like follow it. Yeah. Yeah, like if you want to try it, then go ahead and see if it works. And who knows, maybe that will become like your style. Yeah. Yeah, I know uh, different teachers said different things too. It's like yeah. some of them were very adamant about mixing your own black, so you were working from like a deep blue because right. it's gonna blend better with the colors. Yeah, I remember learning, but. yeah, I remember when I was in painting class in college, they were like, don't like, don't use just black. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, okay, I won't, yeah. <laughs> and it's weird now because with digital work, you're not, for the traditional painting realm, uh-huh. that was because when you mix black with a color, it's gonna kind of muddy the colors natural luminosity. Yeah, When right. now in digital world, it's like, oh, that's not necessarily always a problem because you have no. blending modes. Yeah, things. exactly. So, like, it's not like a mistake has been made and there's no way of fixing it anymore. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, just try it. Yeah, try it out. There's also a question from Nancy. Can you do blending modes in Adobe Sketch? Blending A mode. lot of this is blending mode, right? Yeah, I mean, it's all blended. So, yes, you can. Because, yeah. like, if you go into a layer, mm-hmm. there's the option under, like, the opacity section to choose how you want it to blend. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and it should be the same blending-like features from Photoshop. Yeah. Not all of them, though. Yeah. yeah not all of them. I wonder why not all of them. I don't know. I, I, I've I also wondered that, too. <laughs> I think they put in, like, the more popular ones. Like, the ones that I use are all there, thank God. But, mm-hmm. like... Like pin light is not there, and like yeah. overlays there, right? Yeah, overlays there, yeah. lighten is there, and um, multiply is there. Those are like the main three ones that I always use. So, yeah. But I used to use pin light a lot, and when I realized it wasn't there, I was like, no. No more pin light. Yeah. <laughs> Jose no. asks, did you scan and upload a sketch? Uh, no, I I did the sketch directly. Like everything that I that you see here has been done on here. Yeah. Saves uh, extra steps. Extra sure. steps, yeah. I'm all for like, it's just so efficient, you know. Like, why spend the time, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If I know I can do the same thing, basically. Christina Kaiser asks, "What is your dream project to do if you could make anything or work with anyone?" <gasps> work with anyone? Um, I want to work with. Huh. I feel like I wanted like something like what Victor and I did with Neil Gaiman, like mm-hmm. where she illustrated his book cover. Mm-hmm. That would be a dream, you know, like with a favorite author. Like if I could, oh my gosh, <laughs> if I could illustrate um, Hi- or Haruki Murakami's books, I would die in an instant. I'd be like, <gasps> especially I really don't like the modern covers. I know, and I love the old covers. Yeah, I mean some of them are great yeah. for sure, but like, oh my gosh, if I can do that, so like. <laughs> I, and I which just, Murakami book would you do? Um, 1Q84. That's your favorite? Yeah, right now. Yeah, okay. or, That's the one my brother decided to never read another Murakami book from. Why? He hates it. Why? He said he wasted his time and it didn't pay off and he hates it. Really? But he loves every other book like the most. Okay, yeah. It's All just right. that book destroyed him. Really? <laughs> okay. And yeah. I've heard a divisive kind of thing of that book I too. liked it a lot. I mean, there's a lot of themes in it that's like really uncomfortable, but I mean, I, I liked it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he said it was specifically the conclusion didn't pay off for him. And he was like, oh, this is like watching a really, really, really long show and then getting to the end and being like, oh. Okay, because I actually never finished it. Oh, really? I left like the t- last like 20 Does pages. Does that not drive you crazy? No, that's actually something I what? do. That's something I do when I read. I never finish the but book. But this comes if, back to like the movie talk too, where you're like, I, oh, it can just not have an ending. And exactly. I'm like, what? No. Exactly. So for me, it's like, like something that, this is a lesson in life that you can take with you. And I'm going to give it to you today. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> sometimes you won't get closure. And like with life, like you can demand it all you want, but sometimes you just won't get it. And sometimes you're just going to have to live with that and be okay with it. And I learned that, like, you know, just exercising it with, like, books or mm-hmm, movies. Mm-hmm. Like, um, the Greek director, Yargos Lanthimos, he does it really well with all of his movies, with Dogtooth, mm-hmm, Lobster. Mm-hmm. Like, basically all his movies. Like, it ends without, you don't know what happens in mm-hmm. the end, you know? And, like, 
I love it. I remember when I first figured it out, I like it drove me insane. I was like, why? <laughs> but you know, like sometimes you don't get it, and you're just gonna have to live but with, with that. like with lobster and stuff. I really enjoy. Mm -hmm because they chose where to end it. But if I just didn't finish Lobster, uh -huh. I, I, I would guess go crazy. So. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I, I like the idea that sometimes you just won't know everything, you know? Like, you just won't. And also, there's a mention here of trilogies of books, even though they're terrible. Like, I think we were also <laughs> talking about Annihilation at one point. Oh, okay, um, yeah. Or I was talking about it recently where like that trilogy, I think the first book is by far the best, but like, if you want all the information of the world that they've painted, uh -huh. reading them is... In Annihilation? Yeah, okay. but unlike Dune or something where it's like, I read the first Dune book and I like it a lot, but then I don't like any other Dune book. So okay. I just kind of like I'm actually not. Off. I'm actually not familiar with Dune. Mm. The Dune universe, but... The Duneverse. <laughs> <laughs> the Duneverse, <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's hilarious. There's so many questions about blending modes. Yeah, the uh, for Nathan, I feel like blending modes are sort of just a personal preference when you've played around with them a lot. Yeah. Because they originally came out of photo editing mm -hmm. and not illustration, so yeah. now they're sort of like illustrators utilizing them to get color manipulation modes and yeah. stuff. Yeah, and but... like just making it look more cohesive and all that. I, um, yeah, like for sure, when I started out using color, I didn't know which one I liked to use, mm -hmm. so you, you know, learn over time which one you prefer. So I know now I like multiply, overlay, and lighten. I didn't know that when I first started out. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, there's a Margarita asking about where did you get the grainy texture because she missed it. The grainy texture? Um, it's from the pencil tool. Mm -hmm. The beautiful tool that has done most of the work except for the coloring. Yes, yeah. I mean, I still use the pencil tool for like some of the, um, the coloring, but yeah, most of the time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we are uh, right around that portfolio review time period. <gasps> ah, so I guess I won't finish it today, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Yeah, but you guys get the general idea. And you'll have and the whole uh, time lapse, right? Yes, so you will see, like don't worry, you will see how I got there but um, you just won't see it here today. But I mm -hmm. think I, you know, showed everything like, because I feel the rest of it is pretty boring. <laughs> yeah, it's just coloring stuff in. So um, I, I showed you guys like uh, the main way of how I color and stuff and everything else is just kind of blah, 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 like white noise. So yeah, mm -hmm. I, hope, I hope you guys got out of it and learned a lot from how I, how I work and stuff. It's a lot of meticulous just like yeah, I, in. I actually didn't realize that until I, you know, started doing this. I, I was know, like, right? Yeah, it, it, because <laughs> I just th don't even think about it when I do it. So I was like, yeah, this this is going to be fun, you know, but yeah, it's pretty pretty meticulous, yeah. It's that whole like time lapse thing too of like when estimating uh how long a client project's going to take and then yeah. you know, I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> it's going to take longer than I thought. <laughs> For sure that happens. Excited to see everyone's yeah, work. Yeah. I have a uh, I have the two selected right here. Mhm. Mm so I think we can hop into that. Okay, what time is it now? 10.28. Okay, yeah, I guess we'll jump yeah. into it. Yeah, and give you guys a better perspective of awesome. what I did so far. So yeah. I think now we're gonna take a break from this illustration portion mm -hmm. and we might have some time at the end, but yeah, a lot of good coloring yes. kind of example <laughs> of how Sarah works in mm -hmm. the coloring realm. Yes, thank you and then, for uh, like, you know, tuning in all the time to like watch this happen. Yeah, absolutely. So, mm -hmm. And then hopefully we will make that YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you keep up to date with me on my social media handles, then you will know. Yes. Yeah. So are there any like questions before we get into it? We have like a minute thirty yes. before we kick into the portfolio review, mm -hmm. but we're very excited to see it. Yes, I'm really excited. I'm really excited to see what people have for us to see. Yeah. You're asking about animation. If uh, you have any place where there's examples of your animation. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That's probably going to be for my YouTube cool. if, I, if that launches. So yeah. When that launches. When that launches, yeah. <laughs> and Anna. Hopefully sometime soon. Anna mm -hmm. saying, I guess not finishing a piece much like the closure situation, which. Exactly. Thank you for bringing this yeah. to a full circle. <laughs> it's very true. There's a, yeah. there's a lot to do with like looking at something that's like, oh, I did like half this person. Yeah. 
it's okay to live as it is. Exactly. This. Yeah, you know, sometimes you just gotta live with it and be okay. Just go enjoy the ride. Sometimes you won't get it, and that's okay too. Mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but you will get the finish of this on my social media. So, yeah. or you could just leave everyone hanging and <laughs> yeah. force them to be like, "What would it have been?" <laughs> yeah, you'll see it. You'll see it. Yeah. Yeah. Also, you can uh, see all of the links to Sarah's work. Yes, thank you. Under Tim. a post mm -hmm. that Tim just put up. Mm -hmm. Follow her on the Instagrams, the Behances. Ooh, Squarespace. Are we sponsored? Mm. Uh, yes, maybe. So they <laughs> sponsor literally everything at this yeah, point. Yeah, for like Netflix. Uh, it's like them I, and uh, Apple. Casper. Yeah. What is it? Casper, Blue Apron, oh, and yeah. Squarespace are just like the sponsor of everything on Earth. Really? Yeah. I see them everywhere all <laughs> yeah. the time. It's like they're definitely bringing people in. Yeah. And oh, submission's done. Okay. We just hit that zero. Should we hop into a. The future space review capsule. Yes, let's do it. I'm excited. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> These helmets are rad. This is hilarious. Hi, everybody. We're in space now. <laughs> oh, I don't Welcome think this would back. save us from space at all. No. There's a little bit of an opening. I mean, right I think here. you need the full suit to survive, but. <laughs> but at least you have like the cushioning. Yeah, no. So, this is our uh, portfolio review. I'm going to echo a lot, so yeah. I'm going to wear it like a hat. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to keep this on for a minute longer. Yeah. I just landed back from Earth. You're still in space. Yes. I feel like Buzz Lightyear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is totally great. Spanish mode. Yeah. <laughs> we were so, all like, wow, what? <laughs> here we are in space. Welcome to space. Hello. And we have the two portfolios we're going to be looking at today. Yes. Super excited In which for that. we have Wayne Smith, who has submitted wow. these pieces, uh -huh. in which we can kind of start. Do you want yes. to start on the left? Sure. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Look at Aquatic Dreams. Aquatic Dreams. Ooh. I love the texture work that's done on here. I'm going to take this off now. <laughs> <laughs> I love the texture work that's done on here. Yeah. Is there a... Uh... Yeah. I Did... think... Um, so I guess we're, we can just give feedback, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah. You're uh, you're the expert who yeah. knows everything <laughs> about everything. Right. So um, first off, I just want to say I love like the texture quality of like your work. Um, it's done like super well. It looks very painterly, and I love how you handled the rocks. That's really fun, especially the oh, lighter one. he's fainting. One. He's not yeah. gonna hear any of this. Oh, really? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, the rocks, like, in, especially in like the front area with like the gray, um, that's done really well. I think um, if I were to give feedback with something, I would change. Um, I think the skin tone of the uh, of the girl, I'm assuming, is like it's too close to the color of the sand, so it it's like it kind of like blends in with the ground, and especially because like the pants that she's wearing, it's directly on the line of the ground. So um, maybe bring that pants There's down. More. Oh, okay, yeah. But I mean, we can still. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll I'll, I'll finish up quickly. And for this one, yeah, I think also maybe have more fun with the clouds instead of just two like that. Yeah. But that's the feedback I'll give for that one. I love the one. seagull. Yes. Very, the, very cute. The texture in the rock. Uh-huh. Yeah. And there's a lot of echo in there. Uh, I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> the texture in the rock is uh -huh. really nice. Yeah, for sure. And the texture in general with like the clothing and stuff. Uh-huh. Just kind of similar-ish in the letting right. it be what it is. Right, right. Yeah. So that's really done well. And this series. Oh. Oh. I mean, stylistically, wow. it all totally makes sense to you. That does. puffer fish is I awesome. I love that puffer fish. Oh no, yeah. what's happening? Oh, you can. Look, look I forget it. that uh, I don't ever use the yeah. soft tap. Yeah, yeah, very yeah. Much of a full. Actually, tap it so we can just click on the, the arrows. Yeah, so that's the last one. Yep. I love that puffer fish. This little clamshell is really great. Awesome. Yeah. Where uh, this inspiration seems to have a lot of like editorial kind of. Editorial, almost children's book. Yeah, yeah, children's book editorial. Could you quickly like swipe through all of them so yeah. I can? Yeah. So there's four. Yep. Yeah. The color palette's really cohesive all throughout. That's really great. Um, I love the use of green. I ne I rarely see people mm -hmm. use green so successfully like this. Especially with this uh, skin tone. 
seems yeah. to fit really well with this like negative for line. sure yeah for sure for sure i think um i think if you added a little bit more like v value like tones in it like mm -hmm. um like shad like light and shadows in it it would really bring your piece together really well just because like especially with a setting like beach theme like i i think of like, like the, the sun. sun yeah so it would feel less uh, cold, I think. So maybe considering that, like I can see you starting to do that right here on the surfboard with the feet, but maybe mm -hmm. carrying that throughout the end of the surfboard where you can see like the rest of the body shadow. Mm -hmm. I think that'd be really interesting. Um, yeah, the, uh, what brushes are you using out of curiosity? Yeah, cause they're really nice. Yeah. Maybe Kyle Webster? Yeah. Kind of get the rolling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One. yeah. Yeah, sort of. Yeah. It's really nice. Yeah. Awesome. Do you want to hop into another? Yeah, sure. Great job, Wayne. Yeah, this is very successful. Awesome. Yeah. Next one. It's ah! another, it's another series. And it's a different per Is it also Wayne Smith? Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. Wow, beautiful. This pink's real nice. Yeah. Is that. For, for each one. This is really it's great. Actually five. Wow. Oh wait, it's looping back. Okay. Okay. This is really great. Yeah. Like this is really great. <laughs> mm -hmm. I really like um th these kind of also almost remind me of like a mural ish mm -hmm. kind of especially this one for sure. Totally. Like outside of a farmer's market. Yeah, yeah. This frog. Uh-huh. I kinda really love great. the yeah fact that these two are treated in a very like one color flat way that pulls away from like the focus point being the character. Right, right. Um, and then I'd say for this one like the this blue and the skin color uh -huh. is relatively close in value and mm -hmm. can maybe like punch a little bit. Yeah, I'm but. I'm also seeing like kind of awkwardness with like the legs. Um, it's kind of like like the anatomy of it it seems a little thin when it tapers mm -hmm. into the um, the lo the little stump. So I th I don't think it should you know I think you could use to bring that leg out instead mm -hmm. of putting it in the stump like that just because it feels a little awkward there. Mm -hmm. But um, your colors are really impressive. Yeah. Yes. There's a I'd recommend if you wanted to check out a teacher I had Mark mm -hmm. Hoffman whose mm -hmm. website is Studio Hoffman. Uh -huh. He has some really good like weird folky <laughs> proportioning and stuff that uh -huh. might be inspirational. Yeah. 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 Yeah, this is great. I feel like I want to suggest some artists that do like kind of. Or uh, who did the Stinky Cheese Man stuff? Um, I don't know the artist name. Yeah, but, but like that whole. Yeah, the person that did like the true story of the three little Marie pigs. Maurice Sendak. Yeah, yeah. Or no. Mm -hmm. It was not Maurice Sendak, no. but it's like they it's did that sort of yeah. alley. Yeah. Um, I say look at Mary Blair. <laughs> yeah, look at Mary True. Blair's work. Yeah, it kind of it just reminds me of that a little bit. Just like how you handle color and also the texture. And um, the way you handle like the bodies and stuff, it's very fluid. I love it. Yeah. And very almost like, organic. Yeah, organic, but at the same time, it's like flat. So it works really well. Yeah. And then there's one real quick one before we hop to the next. Mm hmm. Terrace House. It's a completely different style. Yes, Terrace House. You guys watch Terrace House? I love Terrace House. I don't, but my girlfriend does. Okay, it's been like getting really popular right now for some reason. Because it's on Netflix. Yeah, but it's really, this is really done well. Yeah, wow. this is uh, a totally different style, I love this but one. works yeah. really nicely. Mm -hmm. I wonder if it's done all digitally. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like it's almost done with like a like colored pencil, but it looks like clean. You know, I especially my my favorite one I think out of all of them is the this one this one yeah I love this one I just love how like you kind of um, incorporated that sort of like like confetti happening in the um, like behind the head like it it gives you that sort of like stylistic choice mm -hmm. and also with the shirt you know that's like really fun and the face has like the textures that are like you know consistent all throughout yeah. Mm -hmm. I just love like the tr like the the transition from like the oh, scratchiness. Right. Smith. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just love like uh, the scratchiness of the face with like c compared right next to like the block colors of like the shirt, mm -hmm. and that happens mm -hmm. in the other one too, like before this one. Um, yeah. That one. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. 
There's some nice, uh, nice, like, the way the pencil or the digital pencil uh -huh. is being used to show kind of, like, where the fabric bends are without yes. having to actually depict yes. the fabric bends is a nice... And I it's like, it. this actually is a good showcase of including type. Yeah, yeah. Like hand, yeah. hand lettering type and mm -hmm. stuff, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, done really well. And nice. this is all Wayne Smith, right? Yep. Yeah. So the fact it went from this kind of like flat -ish yeah. kind of like folky art right. to this more, depending on like who the client is and mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. Again, it's going, really awesome. Yeah, good to see that you have a big range. Um, yeah, if I were to put this on your website, I love that one, that last one too. I love the stars. Yeah. But um, if I were to arrange this on your website, I would um, make like a separate page, mm -hmm. like with style, based on style. You know, like this one would probably it's be its own page, but like the two other ones that we've seen so far, that would probably be like on your main page. And this totally. would be like set off as like a separate side project that you did for Tara's house. Yeah, I'd yeah. say the only thing I would have feedback on is like mm -hmm. this one and this one mm -hmm. both seem a little less like they're white spaces for showing like shadow on the face uh -huh. like comparing that to here oh yeah like, that's on true on the cheeks and stuff can uh -huh. have a little bit more highlights and like yeah. pop it out mm -hmm. but aside from that like stylistically it's definitely very well done yeah, yeah. great right. job thank yeah. you so much thank you yeah and now our second portfolio uh -huh. Maria Ninfa Maria Nympha. Can you... Eh. Press? Eh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. So it's transferred from, like, traditional drawing to... Digital? Digital, yeah. For oh, pizza as well. No, Your favorite food. Oh, no, stop. It's so cute. <laughs> How could you eat that? <laughs> because then you yeah. have a smile inside you all the time. I love that. I... Like, I think you carried over this piece of drawing to digital, like, really, really well. Like, it's cleaned up. Um, the background is really, like, appropriate and cute. Um, I think the one with the pig, I wish I could see that, like, mud, mm -hmm. you know, texture that you used in the original drawing and transfer it over to the pig. I think that would be... Uh, it, would make the, it would make it a lot more successful. Totally. Yeah. This one seems very, like, exact uh -huh. and cleaned up. Yeah, cleaned this up. One, like... Also, yeah. I think this one sort of has like the dark line, and so yes. stylistically, the fact this one kind of has a lighter brown line yeah. doesn't necessarily connect these two. No, I wouldn't guess it's done by the same person, but I would guess that that like the original drawings, I would guess it, it was done by the same yeah. person. Yeah, yeah, totally. And that's as simple as the color of the outline. So, yeah. yep. I mean, that's all the little like color tweaking. And right. One use black, and one like stylistically, if one's one way, the right. other one to make the series cohesive. Right. 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 Awesome. Great. There's another. Oh, the color or the, the to hair. To try different styles, yeah. it says. You can this scroll one down. fully patterned. There's a big range on yeah. here for sure. I love that guy like with the this hat. Guy. Yeah. yeah. This one's like very distinct uh -huh. kind of style. It is. I like, I, I mean, I think we're just immediately drawn to that one just because it's unique and it's fun. I really like the way you handled the hair in it. Um, yeah, I just, it's really quirky. I love it. Yeah. Awesome. But again, great range. Good to, you know, show people that you can do something yeah. like this. Yeah, and this is like a great way to discover what you like exactly. the most, like what way you like working the mm -hmm. most. Definitely doing it right. That's how I learned my style. So just don't be afraid to delve into different things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <gasps> wow. A complete different style of just patterns. Vector. It's actually sort of reminiscent to that guy with the... Fun beard and like the hair, the Rob other Zilla? one. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, the fun but, guy with a beard. Yeah, this is really great. Yeah, I think for you, um, is it all just the same person? Maria? Yeah, yeah, Maria. For you, I would say like carry this like this on because it's really strong, you know, body of work. This bear is red. Yeah, and like this would definitely sell for like skate shops or like. Um, I mean, I, hopefully she sticks around for the next artist that mm -hmm. we have too. Uh, Timmy yeah, Han. Timmy. Yeah, he would probably have a really good suggestions for you versus me, of course. Because <laughs> this is very fitting to the piece he's been working on. Not sure if yeah. you tuned in for the last two days, mm -hmm. but. Yeah, but it's really great. Yeah, I'd love to get his eyes on here. But um, yeah, carry on with this. Really, um, really cultivate the textures that you're using right now with your line work because it's you're definitely onto something. Really yeah, and great. I think the yeah. 
kind of like this bear one where there's some breathing room between the yes. shapes makes it feel particularly iconic. Yes. Because it stands out from if you stand across a room. Right. Like you can tell register. from like, you know, I'm pretty far away from it right now, when too. When this one's like really complex. It's so when dense. you stand far away, yeah. it's going to be a little harder to read. Looks almost like a thumbprint. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. But I wish my thumbprint looked like a lion. Yeah. Oh, my God. That, can you imagine? That would be great. That would be. <laughs> the future tech. Yes. Um, but I don't really have too much of a problem with that, actually. I just, like, I think that adds to, like, the charm of her, her style. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it is satisfying with that grizzly bear one to see, like, the negative space working to its favor as well. Yeah. Next, Next one. Some quirky watercolor goofy thing. Yeah. <laughs> These are fun. It really reminds me of, like, um, like the sort of weird, um, like Oni NG YouTuber. Mm. Yeah, reminds you of that. Like a like very like um, Adult Swim ish. Yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> or like stuff on Newgrounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is fun. Yeah. I like to see. I like seeing that. Like you're having fun with like the almost like the voice of the illustration. They're more like you know f like fun and quirky. Yeah. Yeah. What uh, what kind of stuff would you love to be making, Maria? Like, mm -hmm. what uh, kind of long-term yeah. art goal? Right, right. Because for sure, like, doing stuff like this is good to, like, um, you know, let it out with, like, enjoying art. But, mm -hmm. like, what kind of... Uh, like, keep it in mind, yeah, like what Logan said. Like, keep in mind, like, what you would like to do. Because I really like that uh, the previous portfolio with like the animals and like mm -hmm. vector drawings, but maybe you didn't have as much fun doing that one. You know, maybe yeah. you had more fun doing this stuff. Mm -hmm. So you know, like, make, think about that. And I think it'll really help you in the future. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This one very much like the last. <laughs> yes. Oh, Ooh. Ruby on Rails. What's that? Uh, it's a programming oh, okay. backend development language. Thing. Okay. 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 Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what? <these> are kind <laughs> of there. It's so bizarre. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny out of context if like you're not in the development realm. Uh huh. None of this makes sense. Definitely. <laughs> but otherwise, these are like yeah. these. These are kind of like iconic things from those languages. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Fun. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? A bear or like a hamster? I'm confused. The Golang Gopher. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. Gopher. Cute. This is awesome. Yeah. This face yes. is my favorite. It's almost like uh, a marriage between like the two, like the uh, the animal vector yeah. stuff with like the stuff that you're doing now. Yeah, like in this portfolio. Because the, the like mark making in this feels yes. really well thought out and like yeah. concise. Right, right, for sure. Looks great, yeah. Maybe it's something like this, we're moving forward with something like this, yeah. But again, like what your client is or what your dream kind of project is. Just, right. Just do that. Yeah. yeah. Work on that and you'll get jobs like that. Oh, look at that animation. So cute. Wow. <laughs> Jet ski Bueller? Like Ferris Bueller? <laughs> Maybe I guess. I'm curious. Yeah. I love it. Oh, wow. These are great. Motion I love cats. these cats. Yeah. This cat's got a little hairdo. Mm hmm. I like that one. Oh, and that's really fun. It's a smart way of handling like an octopus. And I'm sure very like on the face, not simple, but back end might be mm -hmm. a simple thing you could add to your illustrations that yeah. kind of give it some life. Uh-huh, for sure. This is great. Yeah. I think with the octopus one, try to make a second one where like it's like moving like an octopus, like where they sort of like a jellyfish. Doing yeah, because right now it's like wiggling like a snake. But maybe working on something that like kind of moves like a jellyfish, like because I think that's how mm -hmm, octopus mm -hmm. move, and I think that would really give it more authenticity to it. Wow! This kind of goes back to the uh, animal ones. Yeah. The patterns. It's crazy. Yeah. Like Again, you have a really big range. Yeah. For yeah, it. I'd say so. Next up at eleven, we have Timmy and Kathleen, mm -hmm. who are. Uh, Definitely doing a piece that reflects a lot of this kind of pattern. Right. Yeah. Work. Mm -hmm. So, definitely tune into that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. This is great. Yeah. You put. There's a lot more thought into that too. This wow. One's same. Yeah. 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 I can Mandalas. see that. You, yeah. You have fun with line work. Yeah. So. And is this all digital, or is any of it like scanned and then cleaned up digitally? I imagine it's digital because it looks Probably. really clean. Yeah. 
going the vector route compared to what we were. Mm -hmm. This is Adobe Photoshop, supposedly. Wow. It's of which really you could great. just drag into Illustrator yeah, and vectorize. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, vectorize this. <laughs> Make giant mandala. Mm -hmm. It's a tapestry. Wow. Some like 3D kind of looking illustrations. This is really cool. Wow, yeah. This is like really interesting work, yeah. I feel like if you... Oh, there's so much to choose from. Yeah. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Bruno Illustrator. Wow. Goes Big on range. forever. It does. Yeah. Book how many covers. how many do we look at? Patterns. I don't know. Is there one that calls out to you? We have time for like one quick. One more. Um maybe patterns? Yeah. Patterns? Like patterns? Yeah. Or book cover, maybe? Actually. All right. Too late. No, yeah. I can't really see this one. This one? Yeah. I mean, let's try to go to the book cover because this one okay. looks like good. I'm curious how they handle like more of a narrative thing. Or like a design position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, Mexico. Yeah, it's done really well. It's really pretty, yeah. Oh, the minimal style. What's going on? How can we help? Interesting, yeah. This, this is a really good body of work. I think um, working on consistency would be the next step for you, I think, mm -hmm. yeah. Just because there's so much, it's almost like overwhelming. Yeah. Yeah, so um, maybe picking one and running with it would be help, that would be the next step, mm -hmm. I think, yeah. Because if, I think if it's like, you're looking specifically for illustration style and work that's for that, mm -hmm. then kind of having one distinct look right. and feel, but if it's more, design work where it bases itself on what clients you have and what kind of work you want to produce right. and for those, then this works a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't want to like be that person, but I mean, this is something that I heard when I was trying to figure out my style. Um, you know, your style is like your brand, you know? So if it's mm -hmm. not like consistent, it's difficult for clients to reach out to you because mm -hmm. it's like a, it's like drawing out of a hat. They don't know what they're going to get. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, no, they would, theoretically, you know, tell them, like, do it like this. But I feel like clients will have a easier time trusting the artist if this artist is consistent all throughout. So it's like just basic psychology, yeah. you know? So, um, like, I knew, I know when I heard that, I was, like, kind of devastated because I was like, oh, I have so many styles that I like. But, you know, you eventually develop to, like, you, you, you like, end up um, finding a style mm -hmm. that you really like. And it's, uh, it's a combination of things that you've done in the past, you'll find. So yeah. really trying to decide which one to go with, I think will be really helpful for both Maria and also yeah. Um, Wayne. Yeah. I so. think for like every kind of one getting further into careers too, it's like yeah. knowing maybe my style is not best for this thing, but I can still appreciate that thing. Like right. I love certain types of stories mm -hmm. and I yeah. love certain types of like like some heavy metal right, art that's right. like super painterly and of whatnot, course, or like magic, yeah. the card gather yeah, stuff. Yeah, of like, course, yeah. But I'm never, that's not my style. Right, right, So like, right, I'm not yeah. gonna get reached out to for that kind right. of stuff. You know, it's not to say that you can never do other projects that are so totally different, you know, you can totally do that. But um, in terms of like trying to get clients to, you know, reel them in, um, it would help, you, like working consistently would be, would work to your advantage for sure. Yeah, I think that's mm -hmm. what I was mm -hmm. trying to say earlier, yeah. Awesome. So those are the portfolios. They're really great. I'm like, yeah, this is good body of work. I'm very impressed, guys. Like, yeah, thank you so much. Uh huh. I'm looking, yeah, I'm looking forward to you know seeing you guys in the future, you know, online and with like, you know, with a bunch of followers and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So, yeah, keep going at it. It's really great. Yeah. That's all we can do. Thank you for submitting. Yeah. Do you have any last insights regarding um last insights uh how many how much time do we have left like two-ish minutes? minutes yeah yeah um Recap. well i just want to say thank you for everyone you know logging in like you know to you know watch me work and so like, i am really grateful for that um i really almost want to like do something for everyone that's been you know consistently coming in to watch me maybe i'll do that i i, I was thinking even like giving out prints um with like separately like on my own so just go what? follow me yeah <laughs> just go follow me on instagram and you know keep up to date with me there and we can because i want to continue this conversation like i love interacting with you guys so 
and I'm gonna miss that mm -hmm. a lot. So maybe continuing that would be really great. But thank you for really truly, yeah. Thank you, yeah. Logan, as well. Thank yeah. you for having <laughs> us. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but mm -hmm. and um, this final will be on my uh, Instagram and website as well. Very so. excited to see it. Yeah, wrap up mm -hmm. probably by tomorrow. I would say. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like you're on the right trajectory and yeah. speed track. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so thank you, guys. Yeah. yeah. And stick around for the next artist. Yeah, yeah. so coming up right after this mm -hmm. is Timmy and Kathleen continuing with the piece they've been working on for the past two days as well. Yes. And, or, no, they were doing three different ones, right? Oh, really? Oh, I yeah, thought it was just, it was, like, the Traveler. No, piece. that was the first, and oh, then each day was going to be okay. a new one. Okay, okay, cool. So... Yeah, well, we'll see. Yeah, gotta tune in to find out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've yeah. tuned in for the first like 10 minutes of each since yeah. <laughs> I just lurk in the background. Yeah, yeah. No, but definitely nice to like listen to. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Thank hope you. to see you all online and yes. stay in yeah. touch. Stay in touch for sure. Bye, guys. Thank you again. Bye. Bye. Bye.